This is Captain Frick and his first mate Pietru. We decided to chuck everything, leave the rat race and just embark on a new adventure. And that is our new home, Sisu. Join us on our epic journey as we sail the oceans, discovering new horizons, new cultures, new tastes, new flavors, new everything. It's just such a vast, vast world to explore out there. So please join us in our quest. Guys, wait again for one moment. We need to go and say hi to the dolphins. We actually talk to them. <laughs> no, no, she, not me. I think I feel a vibration on the port, but it can be a resonance because we're running two engines and are running at the same frequency, the same revs. But let me go and investigate. This year the vibration is gone. We're running now for almost 20 minutes after I did the dive and I don't feel any more of that vibrations. So if there's any funny vibrations then you have to check your prop. But it's also because look at the sea. The sea is flat, 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 flat. So Sisu is running so silently that you can actually detect these vibrations. At first I thought there's a fish following us. A big nice fish. And maybe we, our lure was out and we caught the fish. Then I noticed our lure is not out. And we didn't caught anything. But it's following us. And then I realized it's following us at the exact distance and not like a fish would. And then I saw it's on a fishing line. 
I think we did go something. We snagged something. Look at this. I don't hear I don't hear any music. Doom 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 doom. I don't hear it. Time to go. It is extremely musty. <laughs> There's a big ship over there, not even two miles from us, and I barely, barely can see the light. And it's actually one, two, three, eight, say 25 ships all around us. <laughs> I can only see one. <laughs> Beautiful as this morning. I was completely messed up the whole of last night. I'm on my six o'clock duty and I'm looking at this right now, which is so amazing. It's just gone seven. And for the first time, I can see for at least one nautical mile. The ships were passing us at 0.5 miles last night. We can't even see the lights. We've got a visitor. We... And it's not the usual bird visitor. Look at this. This is the cutest thing that's happening. I've got sesame seeds on the boat. And I'm seriously contemplating putting some out. Yeah, true. Very sweet. Brought some sesame seed and water. Look. There's some fresh water. Shame, man. It's tiny. Cute as a little thing. <laughs> This is a ship 0.8 of a mile away. No idea how many feet or yards or stuff like that it is, but 0.8 of a mile. I think I established our visibility range. It's about five miles. There's two boats out there. Look, these two boats. We barely see one of them. It is right there in the middle of the screen now. I just looked at the at the latest grip files. It's four days before we will find any other wind again. It, there's just nothing. It's oh not nothing. We've got 4.5 knots of wind. Not even now Cody likes that because the moment you go a little bit forward then you lose that wind and also the mast as it swings is actually reversing the wind. So little wind there is so the wind meter is just going all around. It's just like crazy. There's no ways that I would be able to take this boat for four days, this this Sisu, for four days without any diesel, just with electric motors. It's misty, there's no sun, the sun is coming in now, you can see the sun is busy shining through, but 
it was misty. Uh, so the solar panels will not work that much. The wind generators is not working at all. So I will need to rely completely on battery power. And my argument still stands. If you want to go green, why do you put the Larry Gen set on? Everyone tells me about oh you get range extenders. Range extenders? That's a generator. A diesel noisy smelly generator with lots of noisy smelly okay not noisy but smelly diesel that contaminates everything so if you want to go green take off and everyone wants to send a link to me <laughs> show me a boat without any diesel on board if you have that boat I would be very much interested if it weighs 20 tons and no genset no diesel at all I want to see that boat then we can talk because now on this one for four days going on a motor or two motors that is 13 kilowatt per motor you're not going to make it you were sitting here at the mercy of all of these big ships coming out of the mist and you will go nowhere until the sun is up then it can charge and it takes us almost a complete day to charge 13 kilowatts of, of battery battery power and we have 2 kilowatts of solar so and <laughs> we have 1.2 kilowatt of, of wind gen but now the wind gen doesn't work and I can see half of my solar panels is, <laughs> is also in the shade of the boom not even no, no sails is raised it's just in the shade of the boom so I cancelled basically 80% of my solar panels. Sometimes things is getting very close. Like we, Christy was always less than a mile and sometimes even 26 feet from us. Look, and just to show you how close that is behind us now. There's the boat. Oh, ship. <laughs> They're quite big. And for a chance, it all happened on Brick's watch. <laughs> the close encounters with the big ships. <laughs> it wasn't me this time. <laughs> Captain Pietro is busy, or Admiral Pietro is busy. No, we're doing great. We're like 45 degrees 50, which is our best angle on this on this tap. And we're doing 5.4 on 12 knots of wind. And there's no slamming. I've got I think I've got a sweet spot. I mean we're so close to the wind. I mean 38 degrees. Can you get closer? Uh -huh. One of those beautiful no sailing conditions mornings. No wind, very hot, very humid, and Pedro decided to cheer us up with a hearty breakfast. Just look at this. This is what a good sleep between watches does to a person. Completely rested. So we have some potatoes and onions caramelized, some oh, bacon, some bacon, some mushrooms, steak. and then we have steak eggs. and scrambled eggs and a tomato. Look at that! It is, it is not easy. 
we got this pan pan and normally it's just like beep 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 the radio just goes on and then someone will say about the rescue of a diver or the yeah, weather report yeah. so you, you kind of like get dumb or dull towards that but this time the radio didn't stop beep 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 so I come here and I look at the radio and and then that big boat over there the big ship actually was calling us to relay a message from MRRC, MMRC or something like that and then I told us there's a rubber boat on our way and I first turned to the rubber boat <laughs> I thought hmm, we are in a rescue mission and the next one this guy told us I can see you turning to it, keep a white berth and that particular rubber duck was doing eight knots so I put on both of Sisu's engines and we we're running at 3,000 revs, maximum revs. And they were... And we were doing nine knots. <laughs> and it was a boat full of illegal immigrants. Or what was it? Yeah, if, if, when I looked and I could finally find them, stabilize them quite well, there's maybe like 20 people on that rubber boat. All illegal immigrants trying to get to Europe and I trying to get to Sisu. <laughs> But we saw this big and boat as they turn, as, as we go past, uh, and speeding off that way, they turn to try to catch us. That was the most scariest moment in my life. But remember, first we saw the big ship turning towards us. Yeah, so the big ship make a, a, a while ago. U-turn. A like, while ago, yeah. Yeah, they make a huge U-turn and, it, and the, the big boat was actually lifting like this. It's like, what? That big boat is funny and I said to I said to her, there's a rescue going on so no boats is allowed to go through Gibraltar Strait. And meanwhile this guy came literally came out of his way to come and warn us. Wow <laughs> Tonight we are both sitting up here. <laughs> oh no. This is scary and we're not even close to the we're like in the middle there. Eh? We're not even close to the Africa. We would have had a boat full of people now. <laughs> we have 60 miles away from the African coast. Sure. And about 25 miles from the Spanish coast. Now we would have had a boat full of people and we get through as provisioned as to the brim. So <laughs> we could have fed all of them. Hopefully it would be friendly then. <laughs> yo, yo, yo! Oh, that was not good. And that big ship is still... Shame. Still waiting there, right? Still looking at this little rubber duck. And the authorities know about it. It's like crazy. How these guys think they can come through? This was hectically scary. The other night's five meter waves and 35 knots of winds was nothing. Oh, you just see these guys coming straight for you and I mean the sun is out, there's these huge boats around they're not scared and as for said there's about 20 of them on the boat they would have boarded us and jeez, I don't even want to think about it so uh, what's going to happen tonight? but I think it's because the sea is so calm um, I think that it's easier for them to approach us if it's not busy so you say. So, and they just, they still hanging around there. They, they obviously knew that we were spooked about it. But they're not disappearing or nothing. But I see the big tanker that relayed the message to us is also hanging around there. So we're very grateful for that. We were wondering what this guy was eating for us, the big tanker. Meanwhile, we should have looked for the small boat that was eating for us, not the big tanker. <laughs> That's no, this is very scary. That is scary. Yeah, we did. This is not what we expected so early in the Met. We didn't expect it in the Met to start off. <laughs> yeah, we now is here in a safe place. Yeah. Uh, so now we're going to be spinning our ears glued to the radio because the, the rubber duck is black. Um, the, the passengers are black. Uh, they are dressed and in black. Tonight everything is going to be black and if it's going to be foggy like last night, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have all our flashlights and everything ready. But I mean, it's, it's just like this and they're on you. So I don't know what we're going to do. I've got I no think idea. we're going to go closer to the European coast. 
think we need to go closer there. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a detour, but I think that's the only way. Safety aspect, when we had those uh, by accident, we almost tried to pick up strand, stranded people, then we realized it's not stranded people. The, the Coast Guard actually warned us not to assist the stranded people. <laughs> it became apparent it was illegal immigrants, 25 people on a rubber boat. And we had to motor very fast. And I would not have been able to do that if I had electric motors. Not for that long and not for that far. So, because they were pursuing us, they, they, they thought they had a chance of getting onto the boat and we had to really gun it out of here. Our two diesel engines full blast and we were doing around 9, 9.5 knots just to get away from them and eventually they, they stopped pursuing us. But if we had electric motors, we would have been gone. Pietro noticed this white thing in the water and, and in the past all the white things that we saw was either fuel drums or water drums, empty ones. Uh, the 25 liter drums or that kind of size. But this one, she said it was much bigger and I thought, uh, so we got the far lookers and it has a stabilization function. And if I look clearly, it sure does look like an upside down bow of a boat, of a rubber duck, or a dinghy. Now, taken our last experience of a rubber boat with 25 people on it, we are a little bit afraid of actually going closer, but we checked and we didn't see any other things lying or drifting around. No other flotsam. Yeah, this is the white object we spotted. It's not on the radar, it's definitely an upside down little fishing boat or rubber duck, we don't know. There's a lot of fish activity going around here. I don't know if they're feeding off something or somebody. Ew, that's a scary thought. Okay, we're, gonna, we're going closer to see if we can capture, there's a number on it and then maybe radio through to the old Geos Coast Guard. Now that was again, we was just saying we've got a, a windless trip this time but full of excitement. I mean this upside down, I don't know if it's the bottom of a uh, rubber duck or what it is, but can you imagine hitting that at night? Because we didn't pick it up on the radar, so, um, and it's pretty big, so I think it would have caused some damage. And it's very flat, so you, that's why I could see it miles away, but at night you won't be able to see it. And I think this is very recent, and it's still got its engine on, so I don't think this happened many, many hours ago. But according to the fish life and the bird life around that boat, the, there could be something there, I don't know. It's scary, but we also called that other ship, um, just to see if they saw anything, and we called the Coast Guard, and neither responded. So that's another scary factor. If you need your neighbor to come running, they're not answering the phone. So, yeah, that was excitement. And then the captain wants to go dive the wreck. It's yeah. for salvage purposes. We can sell the engine. Who wants the we engine? We need money. It's a rust bucket at this stage. And on the other hand, on a more serious note, it did have a rope attached to it. So it could be part of a fishing net scheme going on, or I don't know. F-A-D uh, 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 What they say, F-F-A-D uh, F fish attracting device <laughs> A frickin' A frickin' fish attracting device Now could it be one of those as well But at least it's not an upside down with a possible corpse under it We were motoring now for the last three days, four days almost, no wind and then the wind started picking up. 
between Sardinia and Africa, it's acceleration zone, but a huge acceleration zone. And we were battling going, we, because we wanted to get some wind, so we actually were looking for the acceleration zone. And um, we found it. But yeah, we are fully reefed. So the head sail is fully reefed. The main is reef two, head sail reef two as well. So we're fully, fully, fully reefed. Ready for anything that can go wrong. And we found it. But the sea is so funny. When we, we went north a little bit, um, on a, on a port deck, actually on a starboard deck, and as we went on to the starboard deck, the sea was just not nice. Um, we have a wave coming to us as if there's another wind blowing somewhere that causes this huge waves. So you, our angle, true wind angle was always around 90, 80, Degrees and um, and it was not, it was just not nice. We didn't we couldn't make a nice close to the wind so that we can actually get a good uh, VMG. We, our VMG was around 3.3 4 and we were doing around six six knots. Um, so it was actually bad. The wind speed is around it goes between 20 actually 18 to about 23 and the parent wind speed is always above 20 and like now it's around 26 um, and we're doing around 8 to 8.5 knots uh, there's a current against us so we don't do that fast speed over ground but yeah, so now the parent wind is 25 through wind 21, the wind angle is 71, around 71, 73, and our speed now is 7.5. Ah, that was not a good one. It was a rough, a rough night. <clears throat> At one stage, me and Peter both were, were both up here. The sea state is still pretty crazy. And the wind is still up and down, up and down, gusting. I, my biggest fear, lightning. <laughs> okay, well, we've experienced so many things on this journey, um, our second le leg towards our 10,000 miles, um, leaving the Atlantic um, Ocean and coming into the Mediterranean, we've experienced like squalls and we thought a storm and heavy seas etc and no wind at all and motoring for four days and tonight we are experiencing lightning like we've never seen it before. And Lightning has passed. Um, it, one part went that way, and another part is actually all across Algeria, um, somewhere in northern Africa. But you can see it's still lighting up the sky like crazy. And <laughs> above us is stars. It's just like nice, shiny stars. So I need to. It just because the wind is didn't go away <laughs> the wind didn't follow the, the lightning so we have now about 31 knots of true wind sustainable and it's yeah sustaining 31 32 30 32 31 so yeah it's now almost two hours since the lightning storm started these waves are just throwing us all, all around. It's, it's just not even funny anymore. Just hear the wind. 
how the wind is howling through the halyards and the sheet lines.